corn roots are tiny grains that formed early in the protoplanetary disk during brief high temperature events when the corn roots were molten and then quickly cooled and solidified. A corn root is shown here in this image and the rough outline of this corn root is maybe something like this here. The minerals in the corn root are olivine, like here, and pyroxene here. So these are large porphyritic grains. And also opaque phases like this here, this might be metal or sulfide. In between these porphyritic grains is something we call the mesostasis. And it, it consists of calcium aluminum rich phases. It is either fine crystalline, then might be pyroxene feldspar or so, or it is glassy. So in both cases indicating quite fast cooling and in cases also quenching of this material. Corn rules are therefore mafic systems. They are also often quite magnesium rich with in cases up to forced right 99. So if you want to understand the cooling of corn rules, it is helpful to look at uh, the according phase diagrams. Now this is one phase diagram that is well suited to look at chondral crystallization. It is the forthright analyte quartz ternary. And to the right here are the binary phase diagrams constituting the three sides of this ternary phase diagram. So for example, this binary phase diagram here constitutes the bottom line of the ternary phase diagram. Now I said corners are mafic systems quite forthright and magnesium rich, so they should start somewhere in the forthright primary phase field. For example, somewhere like here. This means that upon cooling and crystallization, this composition will develop away from this point and onto the peritactic line here. Now what is happening on this peritactic line? For this, let's look at the binary phase diagram. So when you start here with the bulk composition of the chondral here, and go down, and onto the liquidus, and at this point here, foresight will start to crystallize. So this is the bulk composition, foresight starts to crystallize, and the melt develops along the liquidus line down here. And we can use uh, the level rule, and this will give us the amount of liquid here and the amount of solid on, on this side. And then foresight starts to crystallize, and the melt develops down here to this peritactic point. And at this peritactic point, the olivine the forthright will crystallize with an oversaturated melt to form N-cetyl. So the reaction will be forthright plus SiO2 reacts to n -cetyl. And this happens until all the melt is completely consumed. And when it's completely consumed, the result will be this composition here with forthright and anzatite. So this will, the final, will be the final composition. So the melt does not develop further down in this binary. And this is the same what's happening in the ternary diagram. So the melt will develop along this line here, this peritactic line down to this point P. And at this peritactic point P, um, there will still be the reaction of phosphide plus Si2 to anzatite, but will then be accompanied by anorthite. But still this is already just happening, just phosphide plus melt to anzatite, so it's more anzatite forming, some phosphide is um, consumed, but it will be then accompanied by anorthite. And this will again happen as long as there is melt. There will be no reaction further down to, to the eutectic point, and the final composition will then be forced plus anstatite plus anortite. So this is all that's happening here. And this is all, by the way, should have said initially, equilibrium crystallization. So at each point, the um, crystallizing, in this case forced is entirely consumed again upon further cooling. Now what is happening if it's not equilibrium crystallization but um, fractional crystallization. So let's have a look at this. During fractional crystallization, the minerals that formed 
will not either fully react with the surrounding melt or it will be extracted. Now in case of chondrules, usually olivine is not extracted from the chondrule, but it might not entirely react with the remaining melt. So again, we start something in the ternary primary phase field, phase field here, then the melt will develop towards this peritactic line. Now what's happening there? Let's have a look again at the binary. So we start here, hit the liquid is here, which is, and the bulk composition is, is this one here. And then the melt again develops along the liquidus towards the peritactic point. But not only the melt develops, but also the composition of the bulk system, which means the bulk system is the later point somewhere over here, so this is the bulk system. And then the bulk system might at some point be on the right side of the enzotide when it's on the liquidus here. So still phosphorite is crystallizing, but the bulk composition is on to the right of the enzyme point. And when it hits the well, arrives at a peritactic point, the last olivine in the melt will react to enzatide, but everything, but the melt composition will, will be here, and at this point, enzatide will start to crystallize. It's not, uh, enzatide will start to crystallize down here to the eutectic point. So the final composition will in this case be enzatide plus quartz. Of course, if there is phosphite still in the system, because it didn't fully react with the melt, then there's also phosphite. But from the, only from the phase diagram, it's only enzyme plus quartz, plus there, plus there might be phosphite from a set which simply remained. Now, let's have a look at the ternary phase diagram. So this means that at this point here, when the peritactic line is hit, all the Phosphorite is extracted from the system or not reacting anymore. And this means that here at this point, um, we need to draw a line between enzatide and this point here, and then the melt will develop into this direction and hit the cotactic line here, and will then from this cotactic line develop towards the eutectic. Here at this, at this point, there will be also anatide crystallizing together with enstatide and in the eutectic it will be joined by also quartz. And again there might still be some phosphite left over so there might still be some phosphite in the system. And this is actually what we see in the chondrules. So very likely this is the path a chondral melt took during crystallization. I'm not going into other possibilities in this phase diagram because this is really about what happens in chondrules. Just want to point out one more um, possibility that might happen in chondrules. And this is when, for example, an initial um, composition plots somewhere here. So basically in the binary here, so this is actually a little like um, in fractional crystallization. So where do we start then? And we need to look at, well in the, in the ternary this would be basically that we start here to the right of this line. And in this case, for phosphate first starts to crystallize, develops onto this peritactic line and on the peritactic line, the reaction starts phosphide plus silica to enstatide, but all the phosphide will be consumed, which means that, again, after all the phosphide is, is consumed, this melt develops again along this line. Oops, not that long, only until this cotactic line and from here so enzatide will form all the olivine is consumed and then again to the eutectic where there is then only enzatide quartz and anorthite. So this is the this is one phase diagram that is really very helpful to understand chondral crystallization.